गुड इवनिंग सर या वेलकम मिस्टर कांशन या वेरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम सो ऑल द बेस्ट सर ऑफ कोर्स सो आर गोइंग टू फेस द इंटरव्यू ऑफ कोर्स सो लेट्स सी एंड just introduce yourself uh, mr kanchan uh, what is your background sir i uh, ghanshyam anta um, uh, from uipani village a small village in ghatgaon block in keunjhar district i have completed my primary and high school studies from my village only then i completed my 10 plus 2 studies from dharanidhar college is in kemjer now it is dharanidhar autonomous college i have completed my graduation with uh, public administration honors from ignu that is indira gandhi national open university i am pursuing my pg studies post graduate studies with ba um, uh, with public administration honors uh, from ignu only sir my hobby is uh, swimming my aim is to become a civil servant in addition to that i have completed 15 years of job in the indian navy i have uh, uh, won a bronze medal in uh, running and i have participated in swimming uh, championship command level southern naval command and i have uh, awarded with proficiency award for my professionalism in service and i i am uh, enthusiastic and determined okay fine so uh, mr kanchan so also just try to tell us uh, tell me what is what is your the most uh, say uh, weakness which you wanted to change from your side or what is your great strength that you wanted to capitalize for your you no know, career sir uh, what's your so yeah. My, uh, yeah yeah sir, please so, continue uh, sir so far uh, as my strength is concerned i am very punctual uh, i am experienced i am enthusiastic determined and so far as my weakness is concerned uh, uh, sir i am a little workaholic while working i uh, i forget uh, uh, many things Uh, at the time okay so how do you want to capitalize your strength uh, for your successful career of course we given a chance to become as a an uh, civil servant how do you want to convert your strength how, how, do, you, how do you want to capitalize your you know strength uh, you know for your you know good opening or even transform the society we given a chance to Uh, in a position like upsc either uh, collector or what is other area that you looking for it how do you want to capitalize your no strength sir uh, so far as my aspiration to become a civil service servant as concerned i want to dedicate my rest of my life towards the uh, socio economic development uh, 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 there is Uh, there is uh, scope for socio economic development so far as odisha is concerned there were there there is backward region there is uh, hill areas there is uh, there are tribal they are still uh, still there is illiteracy is prevalent there is problem of infrastructure there is uh, uh, prob- uh, lack of awareness there is in that are not penetrating to those areas so uh, there is a scope uh, scope of social uh, socio economic development and i want to uh, i want to solve for their development okay fine so what is your plan right now say there are no oh, three four important categories uh, in the civil service what is your priority if you are if you are a sport goods goods mark the go sport high grade what is your priority sir my priority is administrative service uh, as it gives huge opportunity there is uh, 
diversity of scope there is scope for innovation so that i can uh, use my potential my uh, working culture uh, for the socio economic development okay fine good that no see i just wanted to ask you so of course uh, india is a country for uh, rich cultural heritage and we we always stand for uh, uh, pluralism diversity is the mainstay in the society like india and uh, whereas uh, st especially uh, archaeological uh, excavations uh, right from indus valley till the modern excavation took place uh, in somewhere in south called keeladi in the keeladi excavation findings uh, how for how do you understand is there any 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 idea about the keeladi excavation when it comes to the historical fact or you know history of india something like that the cultural aspect have you come across a recent uh, excavation uh, in south called the keeladi excavation sir uh, i have heard about this excavate excavation uh, okay uh, but sorry sir uh, right now i am on a fine fine not issue not issue not issue because no part not issue because we need to compare uh, the indus valley civilization which has been considered as you know the say ancient cultural heritage which has been uh born brought from there only but keeladi has you know given us some more insight therefore the recent uh, excavation keeladi has given a comparative analysis and try to understand how the human civilization has been developed uh, in india where the keeladi gives some more inferences that you can look into that fine i think to worry then moving ahead of course uh in the indian constitution of course the federalism is the important main features uh federalism or federal form of government uh, in the modern contemporary you know uh, polity uh, what do you what do you want to say about the federalism what are the main characteristics one could understand uh, when it talks about when it comes to federalism sir uh, federalism is uh, enshrined in our uh, constitution um, earlier we uh, uh, we uh, we learned about uh, federalism now it is uh, cooperative federalism again it yeah. is uh, evolved uh, as competitive federalism federalism is, uh, federalism is an essential part of our constitution which separate uh, our judiciary from executive there are uh, there are states uh, there is a union at the same time there are states as uh, it's unit and uh, other thing that uh, makes our uh, uh, our nation uh, federal uh, that is uh, the uh, uh, that uh, that is uh, the least that is been divided between uh, union and state that are union list uh, state list and concurrent list okay so the, the the division of power uh, uh, between the union common and the state uh, nowadays is id you know debatable where there's no good relations among the uh, between the union and the state when it comes to powering or sharing the power especially in the context of concurrent list whereas there is encro- encroachment of also into it towards the state list where some states demanding where uh, no full autonomy or no complete no sharing power between the union how do you look at this phenomena for example even odisha or bihar they are demanding much more autonomy much more no the power much more shared from the union government how do you look up the term called cooperative federalism when it comes to sharing power between union government and state government sir so far as the concurrent list is concerned it has been often debated that there should be a clear demarcation between uh, 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 between the law making power between center and state but however Uh, there are concurrent uh, there are list that is concurrent list where in uh, both center and state uh, make make laws so it is good for a, a nation uh, that uh, follows federalism at the same time there uh, there there is a national unity character okay uh, so so far as concurrent list is concerned it should be there so that uh, cooperative federalism uh, 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 
cooperative federalism exists, both union and status states work coordinatedly in a synchronized manner. Okay. Okay. Fine. So uh, let let me also uh, ask you a few few more uh, observations from ongoing uh, development of black money matter. So are you all about black money? Great concern where uh, the, 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 the black money has been a, a great question for the Indian development. Uh, government of India are taking so many efforts to, to bring the black money. Uh, in view of that, uh, the Prevention of Money Laundering, money laundering Act has been amended. Uh, therefore, in the light of Money Laundering, uh, no, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, ED, no, Enforcement Director has been given much power and uh, what is your view, what is your role or what is your understanding on uh, UD's role in modern or contemporary India, how they uh, know, use, how they exercise, how they know, execute their real authority to try when they, when they, when they, when they try to bring the black money? Sir, enforcement director is responsible for yeah. uh, a, a proficient agency. So yeah. far as uh, so far as uh, anti black money uh, anti black money uh, uh, thing concerns uh, yeah. it is doing uh, uh, a great job uh, uh, we can take the cases of maharashtra uh, 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 now we can take the cases of uh, uh, ep and bihar mm -hmm. Uh, wherein uh, ED is, uh, ED is uh, doing a great job. Uh, often ED is also considered uh, uh, as uh, the case parrot like uh, CBI. But uh, if we go by uh, their professionalism uh, is concerned, uh, they are doing a great job. Okay, fine. But there is a objection to the Supreme Court of India uh, on the appointment of ED director. Have you heard about that? What is it all about? Currently, the last 10, 15 years, there is a media news uh, when it, when the when when the SC is questioning the appointment of BD. You know what is the background? What is it all about? Sir, uh, I have heard about uh, uh, this uh, controversy uh, wherein uh, the uh, extension of um, uh, director of ED tenure has been um, uh, cancelled by Supreme Court. Um, uh, but uh, for time being, sir, I am unable to answer the question why he has been, uh, it has been cancelled. Sir, I will okay. return that. Fine, fine, fine. Just refer them because uh, where uh, extension has been given uh, for two, three times and therefore uh, Supreme Court raises the question why you are depending upon only one ED director Thus, the ED do, do not have any other competent director where they can be given, rather retaining the same director for three, four times, extending the term like that. Anyway, just refer it, but it's a very important area to understand. Fine. So then I going will... again, of course, uh, Gansham, going again, the, I just wanted to place one more observation. Let's see. For example, currently, where uh, one of the state in India, uh, they have come down with a good proposal uh, to empower the rural, especially the, you know, the grassroots level community people to empower them uh, in view of you know, introducing a special law called Minimum Guaranteed Income Bill. Minimum Guaranteed Income Bill. What is it all about? What is the rationale behind it? How is this going to transfer the society? Any, any thought on this, you know, the Minimum Guaranteed Income Bill? Yes, sir. I have uh, heard about a minimum guarantee bill. Actually, sir, it was structured uh, at the international level uh, in the name of universal uh, universal income coverage. Uh, so uh, it was it was decided that to give some sort of income to those who are uh, uh, unemployed, so that. Their lively, uh, they can uh, live their livelihood and they can take part in our economy and it will uh, it will in turn um, uh, it contribute to our economy in the form of GDP uh, 
so it will uh, it will uh, create a healthy economy and is good for uh, good for uh, the country as this money will in turn um, uh, help in our socio economic devel development okay refer I them where the uh, uh, bottom up approach sir. yeah refer them it's good observation but refer them it is uh, the many the bill has been already codified by the you know state of rajasthan and refer them much more inside you will be getting over there it's a good interesting uh, say initiative taken by the rajasthan fine going ahead uh, kansham here uh, the you, you heard about g20 g20 uh, uh, of course uh, my observation uh, india is really uh, a country which introduce a new uh, say international framework to the global system for example we are the you know the first country one to pronounce the idea of uh, say nam non aligned movement so of course then we also have other framework to comply with international relations with the neighboring country especially uh, when it comes to sarc uh, therefore we have a, the basic framework right, like a nam or a sarc and but how what is the outcome of this nam and the sarc uh, when the global system has been keep changing whereas uh, no nam uh, has no relevance uh, when uh, the two power block has been completely no see taken off there's no two power blocks uh, and therefore uh, what is the scope what is the relevance of no naming the term called nam then of course sarc what is the outcome of a sarc and connecting to the nam and sarc the current g20 what do you want to take what do you want to understand what do you want to say out of the three international developments when it comes to from nam to sarc from sarc to g20 so far as g20 is concerned uh, it provided a, a platform to a country like india who is aspiring having a population of 1.4 billion is aspiring for united nations security council permanent seat aspiring to be a leader of global south aspiring to leader of uh, 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 leader uh, to make a uh, whole our as one family as it seem as it seem suggest india want to create world brotherhood vasudeva that is vasudeva kutumbakam mm -hmm. one, one family one art one future uh, in context of nam in context of nam and sar uh, nam even us uh, a different uh, a different uh, figure uh, we, uh, we we created a brand in uh, foreign affairs using nam it give it given us identity that we are neither aligned with usa nor aligned with ussr it is the uh, one of the biggest organization uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, one of the biggest record which gives us one brand that is non aligned brand and uh, uh, create india as a brand and so far as sarc is concerned we need to revive sarc to counter china we we have to take the help of sarc as well as nam um, uh, it is necessary of the uh, time where china Uh, wants to uh, uh, wants to uh, uh, create tension in south south china sea indo pacific region and indian ocean region so uh, 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 it is necessary of the time to revive nam sar and uh, with the help of g20 we can become a superpower okay fine uh of course uh the society by and large where uh, women are more vulnerable and especially dalit women are more vulnerable uh, therefore uh, uh, the rape cases i'm referring the rape cases across india it's really you no know, it's shooting high it's exploding like anything and what is the legal uh, what is i you know the social remedy To, available to empower the uh, SCST women. 
uh, uh, what is the protective protective mechanism available to empower the SCS women from this kind of heinous crime, especially sexual crimes against the Dalit women? Uh, sorry, sir, I am on a phone. Fine, phone. not an issue. Not an issue. Okay, fine, not an issue. Uh, so currently, uh, India witnessed uh, it has already successfully launched uh, Chandrayaan Chandrayaan three. So, what is the difference between the Chandrayaan two and Chandrayaan three? Sir, sir, uh, uh, Chandrayaan three uh, launch um, uh, is important. So far as India's space mission is concerned, earlier we have uh, sent two missions regarding uh, 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 to the moon, uh, that is Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2. And uh, uh, this time it is Chandrayaan-3. The difference between Chandrayaan-2 and 3 is that uh, in Chandrayaan-2, we sent orbiter, rover, and... Uh, and uh, Uh, oh, um, in Chandrayaan 2, we send uh, uh, three uh, three components, where in, in Chandrayaan 3, we send two components only. Um, uh, okay, fine, refer them. Uh, yeah. It is Chandrayaan 3 uh, is a three component, whereas Chandrayaan 2 has you know, the same three component, but it was you no, know, it is uh, it has a hard landing, it's a soft landing. Anyway, you refer them with three units now, it is very well planned. Uh, but it's a good, you know, initiative from our Indian ISRO side. But you refer the much more uh, information will be getting. Fine. Then going again, of course, uh, moving to the uh, the current, uh, uh, say, <clears throat> uh, economy, of course. Try to just to, to map your idea in economy. See, we have been talking about, say, poverty. And we have uh, really... Uh, booked out to to reduce the poverty right from the first planning commission. Of course, till 13th planning commission, it could be not possible. Then thereafter, you have a Nidhi 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 Ayog uh, for a last last two last two terms where we have a Nidhi Ayog is working. Uh, what is the or any other is any is there any specific say you know initiative or any specific say uh, uh, <clears throat> policy has been introduced to reduce the Poverty under the Nidhi Ayog. Uh, sir, uh, uh, so far as uh, uh, so far as poverty is concerned, it is uh, mm. one uh, one of the goal of our sustainable development goal. Um, uh, yeah. That is first and uh, first and second uh, goals of sustainable development and development goal is related to eradication mm. of poverty. It was started. Uh, from the uh, very uh, very first planning commission and uh, mm -hmm. then uh, garibi hatao was included in fifth planning fifth planning uh, uh, that that was the slogan given by indira gandhi then again mm -hmm. after the uh, coming of niti ayog it was the very priority of niti ayog to uh, uh, alleviate poverty uh, yeah uh, in nowadays scenario, there are a lot number of schemes to alleviate poverty. Uh, for okay. example, one is MG Narega, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, okay. wherein uh, uh, it provides 100 day, um, uh, uh, 100 labor days to, to, yeah. Uh, but uh, like MG Narega, there are other schemes also, yeah, uh, which uh, which contribute to uh, alleviation of poverty. Okay, fine. I think good good uh, thought that you could share uh, your understanding on this these dimensions. But last couple of no, the this is going to be last couple of observations. For example, so suppose you are given a chance to 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 be a say. Mm, say collector, for example, you cleared your say UPSC, you will be the good grading, and you given a chance, and you will be you know has uh, will be a service. Uh, 
so how, how, how best you are going to execute your a plan uh, to empower the especially odisha rural women children or other disabled people from the particular you know the districts that you belongs to As a civil servant, I will uh, 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 do the social, socio-economic development uh, of the district. I will uh, plan uh, plan it uh, in coordination with other departments um, uh, like welfare uh, extension officer, SCSC department, and uh, ICDA. And that, uh, there is DRTA. Uh, uh, there are uh, there is uh, revenue department and coordinate all uh, socio uh, economic development schemes um, that will be my priority uh, and okay. another priority is uh, to educate them about their uh, rights their privileges the schemes that are intended uh, for them so uh, my priority will be to create awareness among themselves among them so that they can seek for their rights their privilege uh, at my personal level on holidays i will uh, i will select uh, one place one one place and go there in turn and educate them about their uh, privilege their rights so that they can seek uh, uh, for uh, uh, okay fine this is the last uh, uh, observation uh, so you are given a say chance of course you are placed uh, you know as a ias officer in a leading say district where uh, there, there are so many challenges there are where there, there, there may be a need for you know so many development projects where you are very actively involving and executing all your plan but by the time you will also have a other challenge for example the challenge comes like this for example where so uh, whether you wanted to be a loyal to the your own profession or you want to loyal to the institution where you work for the given situation where things comes like this where what is your you know the understanding what is your role what's your priority uh, when challenges comes in a situation where you disperse your service for you know some leading critical projects where there are external threats external influences comes by the time what do you want to do do you want to show your loyalty to the to your profession or do you want to show your loyalty to the institution where you work for sir uh, my priority uh, uh, will be uh, uh, will be that of a civil servant uh, for socio economic development internal security uh, integration um integration so i will uphold the uh, civil service ethics uh, i will stick to standard operating procedure i will stick to what i trained for um, without getting influenced by um, uh, other so uh, other social elements and in social elements other ills of the society i will work for the country uh, uh, for the upliftment of the poor socio economic development for the security of the nation integration uh, uh, without hesitation okay fine all the best kanchan go good attempted well and uh, i i just wish you uh, to to crack the exam and interview and uh, i i wish you once again uh, to clear and to be a no a civil ceremony in your future good all the best thank you sir uh, thank you okay. nice to have uh, you like interviewer sir it will be my uh, uh, pleasant experience uh, forever oh look all the best.